So fibrosis plays an important role. But now the question is, we have other causes of hypertrophy as well. Do we see a reduction in strain there, for example, in hypertensive patients? Yes, we see some reduction of strain in hypertensive patients, but the most marked reduction is found in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and the most increased wall thickness also in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. But it's not so easy because you can see there is some overlap between patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and patients with hypertensive heart disease. So can we actually assume that patients who have hypertrophy because they have hypertension with the same wall thickness as for example a segment who has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy would have a better strain? So is the strain worse with the same thickness in patients who have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? I think this is not really very clear but my impression is that patients with left ventricular hypertrophy due to hypertensive heart disease have only a minor reduction in strain, right. whereas patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy have a very severe reduction of right. strain. So it actually makes sense from the perspective that in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy we have fiber disarray which causes this dysfunction, yeah, exactly. while probably in hypertensive it's more the fibrosis? I think so. Yeah. But let us take a look at a patient with hypertensive heart disease to see what we find with speckle tracking. Here's a 68-year-old woman with hypertensive heart disease. Let's take a look at the apical view. It's clear that this is concentric left ventricular hypertrophy. We see that all the walls are contracting normally and we have good radial function. Ejection fraction by plane was calculated with 66%. Of course, again, we have the secondary findings of hypertensive heart disease, such as left atrial enlargement as well. We measured a septal thickness somewhere in the range of 15 millimeters. But what is strain? Well, here is the strain pattern. We do have a normal global longitudinal strain of minus 18.5, but there are some reductions in strain, again, at the basal part of the ventricle. Now, how do we interpret that? Well, it shows that, of course, left ventricle hypertrophy can cause a reduction in strain, but it does not necessarily have to be associated with a low strain values, especially if patients are in the early stage of left ventricle hypertrophy. So probably it's the component of fibrosis which plays a role. So this patient would probably have a better prognosis than a patient with maybe the same degree of left ventricular hypertrophy but with a reduction in strain. As a matter of fact, this patient was also not symptomatic, no dyspnea, fairly good exercise capacity. But Fabian, how can we use the pattern of speckle tracking to decide whether or not the patient has hypertrophic neuropathy or maybe any other differential diagnosis? So I think this is the most interesting thing about strain that we can find typical patterns and you can see that in patients with an athlete's heart they even might have an increased global strain and no typical pattern but patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy have a severely reduced strain. Patients suffering from hypertensive heart disease have basically septal basal impairment of strain but why? Because it's the shear stress which is the highest in the basal septal segments. In aortic stenosis we also find an impairment of the basal segments. In Fabry's disease, we find basal or posterior lateral um, involvement and a reduction in the strain. In amyloidosis, we have even a typical appearance, the apical sparing. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. And also in anabolic cardiomyopathy, we can find a diffuse impairment of myocardial function. Can you show us maybe some examples? Here we see a healthy control. You see everything is red, everything is fine. He has got a normal global and regional function. This patient has Takotsubo, broken heart syndrome. And you can see that the apical segments are impaired. You can see the blue color here. You can see a patient with a severe myocardial infarction, occlusion of the circumflex artery. You can see the impairment here in the region of the circumflex artery. And this patient is suffering from an apical form of non-compaction cardiomyopathy, where you can see a um, decrease in the apical segments, but also septally and anteriorly. Now let's look at some other cases. This is a case of amyloidosis. You can see a preserved longitudinal function in the apical segments, but a nearly blunted signal in the basal segments.
This is the Fabry disease, a storage disease, where you can find a decrease in the basal segments. And in this patient with a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, you can see that the apical segments are impaired in this case. And this is a typical form of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy with the highest degree of impairment in the anteroceptal parts. Of course, if you just look at these tracing, it's very difficult to make the diagnosis, so you should always put it, obviously, into the 2D image, into the clinical uh, uh, picture of the patient. But I think it does help us a lot in differentiating some pathologies, and I think, uh, at least in my clinical experience, it's always good to use it to follow up patients.